Hey y'all, welcome to the first What's For Dinner of 2023. I am super pumped to get this video out because last week's dinners were honestly phenomenal. So I'm really excited to share these recipes. Also, if this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome, I'm Kristen. And as of right now, I share these dinner videos weekly. And I also like to throw in lunchbox videos for my husband and two kids. And I've recently started incorporating grocery hauls again. So if that is something that interest you, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Making good food is honestly my passion and I love to share that. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into the first recipe. As you have probably already guessed, I am making chicken parmesan. And let me tell you guys, this was the best chicken parmesan that we have ever had. I have made this in the past using like different recipes and it always turns out good. But this recipe is spot on and it is just absolutely incredible. So, so far I have took two boneless skinless chicken breasts and just sliced those in half to make four thinner pieces. I got it covered with some cling wrap and I'm just pounding that out to make it even thinner and just to make sure that everything is uniform in size so that it will cook up perfectly. I'm also going in with plenty of salt and pepper to season the chicken and I will of course be doing this on both sides. And this right here is going to make or break your chicken parmesan. Um, you definitely do not want to skip this step or it's not going to turn out near as good. Bland chicken is just not good. And you can, of course, feel free to add additional seasonings if you want to, but there are just some recipes that I feel only need salt and pepper, and this is definitely one of them. This is a messy or somewhat messy recipe to make, but it's also very simple and just uses a few ingredients, which is what I love. So I'm sitting at my breading station right now. And in the first bowl, I just have a half a cup of flour, one teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. In the second bowl, I'm cracking in two eggs. This is what's gonna make that breading stick so nicely to the chicken. And you will, of course, wanna get those beaten together very well. In the third bowl, you are gonna need a half a cup of some Italian style breadcrumbs. We love the great value one, and it is already seasoned, so you don't have to add any additional seasonings to this bowl. Um, you'll also need a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. This particular Parmesan is my favorite. I went and shredded that up really quickly and then just added that on top of the Italian breadcrumbs. So here's my little setup. I'm just going to take the chicken one by one and roll it around into that seasoned flour. Definitely let the excess kind of like roll off. Um, but next I'm going to swirl it around in the egg wash, just a quick little dip. And then it will go into the breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese mixture. You definitely want to make sure to like press the cheese into the chicken just to help it stick better. But I was so impressed with how well everything stuck to this chicken. I had zero problems with anything falling off, even while I was frying it um, and serving it up. It's just a very solid breading. So next, I'm going to get my olive oil added to my skillet at about a medium high heat. This is what I'm going to cook the chicken in. And I'm just doing a thin layer to shallow fry it. So while I was waiting for that to heat up, I went and shredded some mozzarella. I didn't show that, but I just kind of wanted to throw that in there to kind of show y'all the timeline of how I do things. But once that oil was shimmering, I knew that I could go ahead and drop my chicken in. And I really like to use a timer for stuff like this because I can get pretty scatterbrained in the kitchen sometimes. So that really helps me to not burn things. Um, but three minutes per side, cook this chicken perfectly. Um, I'm also moving very slow. I kept it in real time because I do not want to scratch my skillet with that fork. That's a huge no. Um, but look at how beautiful that crust turned out. Um, so now that it's fully cooked, I'm going to get that moved on over to a separate plate. And then I will, of course, start cooking up that second batch of the chicken. And it turned out even nicer since the skillet was so hot at this point. It's just so beautifully golden brown. But now that my chicken is cooked, I went and pulled out a 9 by 13 casserole dish. You'll want a jar of your favorite spaghetti sauce. We really like the Prego one. And as you can see, I am adding quite a bit of it. And in my mind, I thought that this would turn my breading to like mush, but I swear that it helped tenderize this chicken like so beautifully. This chicken was like melt in your mouth good. And honestly, probably the best texture of chicken that I have ever accomplished 
ever in the kitchen, uh, which is another huge reason why we love this so much. So you'll also want to add more sauce to the top of the chicken. So I'm just doing a strip down the middle and then I'm going to take that mozzarella cheese that I shredded up and I'm just going to add that over the tops. Um, you could also do slices of cheese if you wanted to do that over shredded, but that is going to go in the oven at 425 degrees for 15 minutes. And as soon as I pulled it from the oven, I topped it with some dried parsley. I feel like that makes it look even even more appetizing and we were just so excited to dig into this. I served it over angel hair pasta which we have really been loving lately and it just turned out so divine. We loved everything about it, would not change a thing and I guarantee I could get away with making this once a week, every week and no one would complain or get bored of it because it is just that good. It was the perfect way to kick off the new year. I was very proud of this meal and it was most definitely our favorite meal of the week. Up next, I'm making beef stew. I have not made this in a long time, but I remember the last time I made it, we really loved that recipe. So that's the same one I'm using here. I did not feel the need to go out and look for another. So in a gallon Ziploc bag, I've added a third cup of flour and I'm just seasoning it with a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, onion powder, and Italian seasoning. So here I'm just giving it the little swish and squish, as I call it, uh, to get the seasonings really combined in with that flour. I'm going to grab my package of beef stew meat. As you can see, it's just a little bit under one and a half pounds. You can use up to two pounds for this particular recipe, or just double it if you have a really big pot. But I'm getting all of that added to that seasoned flour. I'm going to seal it up good and give it a really good shake because I want to make sure that every crevice of that beef is perfectly coated in that seasoned flour because it's gonna make for a really nice flavorful crust and that flour is also gonna help thicken up the stew later on. So I've got my big Dutch oven out, again, at about a medium high heat with a thin layer of olive oil. And I am gonna sear all sides of the meat. Um, as you can see, I'm just kind of dropping it in one at a time and I'm leaving plenty of room for it to sear. This is one of those things that you definitely don't wanna overcrowd the pan. You don't wanna overlap or you just will not get the sear that you are looking for. Um, I did end up having to do this in three batches, adding in a little bit of extra oil in between because that flour like to really soak it up. Um, this part is definitely my least favorite part of making beef stew because it is a little bit time consuming, but it is completely worth it and it really does add so much extra flavor. Um, my recommendation, if you can, try to make this around like lunchtime since it does have a longer cook time. Um, that's what I did and you know, these Dutch ovens can really hold a lot of heat. And this is one of those things too, the longer it sits, the better it's going to be. So that's my recommendation. Um, but as you can see, um, we got a little bit of a situation going on here. Normally I would just uh, deglaze that and kind of scrape it and have extra flavor in the soup, but that was just straight up burnt. These Dutch ovens get really hot and it's very easy to burn things. So I added in some red cooking wine and I decided to um, dump that out and kind of take a paper towel and wipe it out and I'm really glad I made that decision um, But then I added in a little bit of extra olive oil and I'm throwing in some minced garlic um, I don't love my garlic press if I'm being honest I feel like it wastes a lot of garlic and it's a little bit difficult to clean but I have it so I keep on trying it but I don't know I think I would rather just chop it up myself but Maybe that's just me. Um, I did add in a little bit more of that red cooking wine. I'm going to keep it this time, not, not dump it out. That's going to stop that garlic from cooking and potentially burning. And then I'm adding in a full six ounce can of tomato paste, and that will stop the garlic from cooking as well. And also, anytime you like sear tomato paste like this um, before you add in a liquid, it adds such a depth of flavor to the tomato paste. It's just very, very good. Um, but now I'm going to add that beef back in and I'm going to add in this full carton of beef broth. This is four cups. Um, after you get the beef seared, everything else is honestly just a breeze, especially if you have it all prepped and sitting like next to you. Um, so now I'm going to add in some potatoes. These are some yellow potatoes that I have washed and chopped. It's about three medium sized ones and I'm just doing it by the handful because I didn't want it to splash everywhere. I also added in a couple stalks of celery. Those actually came from the freezer if you're wondering why they looked like that. And then a couple good sized carrots that I peeled and chopped. And now I'm adding in several dashes of Worcestershire sauce and two teaspoons of Italian seasoning as well as one bay leaf. And then you will just season it 
it to your taste with salt and pepper. And just remember that you can add in more at the end of the cook time after you've tasted it. So always just use a little bit less than what you think you'll need. I almost forgot, but I wanted to add in some onion powder since that's a good flavor to add to a beef stew. Um, I let that come up to a boil and then I'm gonna get my lid added on and I'm gonna turn the heat down to low. And this will need to cook anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours, just depending on how you like it. Um, we like our vegetables to be super, like fall apart tender, as well as the meat. So I did mine around two hours and it was just perfect. After taking out that bay leaf, it is now ready to be served. I thought the consistency was perfect, so I didn't thicken it or anything. Here is my bowl. I topped it with some parsley, and we had it with a French baguette that I just baked in the oven and topped with butter. It went so well with this, just like using it to soak up the broth, but we all absolutely love this. Super good, and it was just perfect on a rainy, cold day. I highly recommend it. If you are looking for a good beef stew recipe, this is it. The next day, I took a little break from cooking because it was my son's sixth birthday and he requested Pizza Hut, which I forgot to get any clips from. But afterwards, we went back to my parents' house to have some cake and ice cream and he said that it was the best day ever. On this night, I tried out a new recipe for smothered burritos. Burritos have been sounding so good lately and it's just something that I rarely make at the house simply because I just kind of forget about it, I guess, but we order them all the time at Taco Bell, so here's your reminder to make some burritos at home. So I started by browning up a pound of ground beef. The recipe actually called for one and a half pounds of ground beef, but I freeze my meat in one pound portions, and I just didn't want to break into another one and not use it all, um, but I would keep it this way next time. I actually really like the ratio of it, um, but I did season the meat with salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder. I drained off the grease and I'm going to add in two tablespoons of taco seasoning. I'm also going to add in this whole can of refried beans. I really like the Kroger brand of those, by the way. Really good and really cheap. Um, I'm also going to add in some salsa. Um, this is my go-to. It has been for the last couple of years, and I do like to run mine through a blender just because I don't like onions, so this way it's kind of invisible, and it just works. So I'm going to start getting all that combined. Um, definitely takes a little bit of patience, but as soon as those refried beans start to heat up, it's going to be really easy. And then the last thing that I'm going to add to this skillet is some sour cream. I just kind of eyeballed it, but you need about a half a cup, and I just love the creaminess that that gives this. In my opinion, I don't think you can really taste it, but if you are completely against sour cream, you could definitely swap it for some Greek yogurt, but I don't recommend leaving like it out. Um, use either one of the two, but moving on, I've got a small can of enchilada sauce. I like to buy the mild variety because anything over that, my family will definitely complain that it's too spicy. So I'm just taking some spoonfuls of that and adding a thin layer to the bottom of my casserole dish. Now I will say that I had a little bit of problem um, with the burritos wanting to stick to the pan, so I definitely recommend using some nonstick cooking spray first. Um, but now I'm going to start assembling the burritos. So just the meat mixture with some shredded cheese on top. I am using the Tortilla Land tortillas. Um, I showed the package in my last video. It was a grocery haul. They are our favorite tortillas. You find them in the refrigerated section, and you do have to cook them first. I just did that off camera. Um, but they seriously make these so much better. Since I have found these, I have been wanting to make all the recipes using tortillas. And I think that's another reason why I just kind of stopped making burritos because I don't love the other brands of tortillas before I knew about these ones. So anyways, after I got all that done, I placed them seam side down in that dish. And I'm just taking about a cup of that enchilada sauce and pouring it over the top and then just using a spoon to spread that out. Now I'm just taking some more cheese and putting that over the top. Um, I use my new food processor to shred that cheese up that my parents got me for Christmas. It's a Ninja one and I have been loving it. It shredded that up within seconds. Um, but yeah, um, I'm gonna pop that in the oven at 375 degrees for 20 minutes. And as you can see, the sauce is kind of bubbling. The cheese is nice and perfectly melted. If you wanted to make the tops a little bit browner, you could broil it, but I didn't feel like that was necessary this night. But I topped it with a good amount of sour cream and I also made some homemade guacamole that is something I have been craving so I put some extra on the side with some tortilla chips to scoop it up but this turned out so so good it was very simple um we really really enjoyed it love the flavors 
I would most definitely make it again. And of course, wanted to kind of break into that for you, even though you already saw what was inside of it. But yeah, I definitely recommend this recipe as well. Okay, so a couple months back, Kroger had a really good sale on these frozen chicken wings. So I grabbed a bag, it's just been hanging out in my deep freezer, and I figured that I would finally give them a try and let y'all know what we think about them. So I got that bag thought out. This is the full bag in this mixing bowl, which is the perfect amount for us. And I'm gonna go in with a paper towel and I'm gonna dry those off the best that I can. I'm also gonna go in with some olive oil and just uh, mix it with my hands. Um, um, that's going to help the seasonings really stick to it and also help crisp it up. I am going to add in about a tablespoon of baking powder. Baking powder does wonders for baked chicken wings. It really helps crisp it up as well. And I'm going to be using this barbecue seasoning as my main spice for the wings. I also found this a few months ago and I've only used it one other time for some pulled pork and it turned out amazing. Um, so it turned out really great on these wings as well. It just has all kinds of wonderful things in that bottle. So I didn't worry about anything else really. Um, I have a 10 pool line cookie sheet with a rack over it that I sprayed with nonstick cooking spray, got my wings laid out and I'm adding some more seasoning cause they just look too pale. And I also went in with some black pepper, but I'm going to bake that at 425 degrees for 30 minutes. And then I pulled them from the oven and I'm going to get them all flipped over and I'm going to season the underside better as well, because again, it was just looking too pale, um, but I'm going to pop those back in for a final 20 minutes. So here they are once they are done the skins crisp up really nicely and I did use a meat thermometer as well just to give me peace of mind I guess but after that cooking time it's kind of undeniable that it'll be done but I'm gonna get all those transferred to my bowl you can definitely eat them just like this because again they're seasoned very well very delicious but we are a saucy bunch so I'm going in with some sweet baby rays and we're gonna have some barbecue wings so the final verdict the flavor was great um we really like the flats but the drums just seem to be like egg extra fatty. So I'm not sure if I would buy that package again. I don't know if it's just in our head or what, but if you bought it before, let me know what you think. So to go along with the wings, I'm also going to make some quick like little pizza hand pies. I have never made this before, but I've had that uh, pie crust in my fridge for a while, not really knowing what to do with it. And chicken pot pie just hasn't been sounding that good lately. So pizza and wings go good together. So that's what I'm going for. So I've got it laid out on a piece of parchment paper and I'm taking my largest biscuit cutter and cutting it into four circles. I'm going to grab some pizza sauce and place just a small amount on each one, as well as some some shredded mozzarella and three pepperonis per circle. Um, these sealed together really easily. Just simply folded it over and then took the back of my fork to kind of pinch it together. And yeah, very, very simple, very quick. I also wanted to show that I do not waste the scraps. I just rolled it out and created another one. I try my best not to waste anything in the kitchen. Um, but there they are after I got those all fixed up. I did do both packages, even though I didn't show it. And then I got this last minute idea to add this submarine dressing that I have to half of them just to give it a little bit of extra flavor. I don't know if it changed it all that much, but it sure made it look a little nicer. I only did it to half of them because my kids were in an extremely picky mood this particular night for whatever reason, but I baked those at 425 degrees for 15 minutes. I really wish that I kind of tore into one for y'all just to show it like melted and all gooey and stuff, but here's my plate. Again, even though we weren't that impressed with the drum quality of the wings, the flavor was really there. The flats were good we still enjoyed it. And as for the pizza pockets, um, me and Josh really liked them. I personally love pie crust and I loved how different it was. Um, but the kids, not so much. They were not a fan of the pie crust. So I doubt I will make it again, sadly, but don't let that steer you away from making it. If you love pie crust, you will love these. So over there in that bowl, I have some ranch and pizza sauce. The ranch is for the wings and the pizza sauce is for the little pizza hand pies. And then I just have a little simple side salad to go along with it. Last but certainly not least, I tried out a new like pork chop bake that's called Swiss Pork Chops. So I started by adding a half a stick of butter to my casserole dish and I let that preheat with the oven to melt it down. I've got six boneless pork chops laid out and I'm gonna season those with some garlic salt and black pepper. While that butter is melting, I'm gonna get everything prepped. So to a bowl, I'm adding in one can of cream of chicken soup and I'm just gonna thin that out with a little bit of chicken broth that I had hanging out in my refrigerator. 
here and I'm gonna give that a good mix. I'm also gonna take this full bag of croutons and I am gonna crush that up with my meat mallet, just kind of beating it up. And as soon as my butter was melted, I pulled that from the oven and got my pork chops laid down, seasoned side down. And now is when I'm going to take the opportunity to season the other side as well. So next, I'm going to take my Swiss cheese and add one slice per pork chop. And then I will take the cream of chicken soup and I'm just going to spoon that over each pork chop. And then I'll just take the back of my spoon to spread that out into a more even layer. Now I'm going to take that full bag of the croutons and just layer it over the cream of chicken soup. Very simple and quick to throw together. So that's going to go in the oven. I did mine for 25 minutes, but it will of course depend on how thick your pork chops are. Mine were just normal size and you never want to overcook pork chops or they will be so dry and tough. But I serve this with a side of steamed mixed vegetables, just seasoned with butter, some more garlic, salt, and pepper. And I'll also made some instant pot garlic parmesan rice. I have showed that recipe in a couple videos, but for this video, I will link that recipe in my description box. It is such a great side dish. And these pork chops, y'all, they were so dang delicious. Um, we love the flavor of them turned out so nice. The only thing I would do different next time is I would probably use about half the bag of croutons. I don't feel like it needs the full bag, but my husband disagrees. He loves croutons, but I just thought it was maybe a little bit too salty, but I also seasoned it pretty heavily with the garlic salt, so it's probably my fault, but that is all I got for y'all in today's video. I hope that there was at least one recipe in here that you'd like to try. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me, um, and I also just want to thank you so much for being here today and watching the video. I appreciate you guys so much and I will see y'all in the next one.